Hello, I'm Blake. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Daniel FL, and today I'll be talking about where slice better can do and how it improves machine learning performance. Uh, by, by myself, I've got a PhD in computer science from my team, and I've done a lot of work for the last four years in the field of privacy and personalization and better data. Um, so, the big question here is um, how can we create a model that captures diverse real world data? Uh, so, today's solution is like we just build like one machine learning model and a one size fits all model that would like work for everything, and that's what we expect. Um, however, there are a lot of like challenges associated with this. The first challenge being it's extremely hard to centrally aggregate all these data sets because of a lot of privacy regulations like HIPAA, CCPA, GDPR, which prevents us from collecting sensitive data like transactional data or like EMR data, medical image data, etc. And then the second challenge is uh, diverse cohorts would cause different problems because your machine learning model might perform really well on like one set of groups while it might be really bad on like a minority population. So how would we address this challenge? So what we propose is to make use of first slice for your data. So our solution basically ensures that user privacy is preserved. We make use of techniques like differential privacy, multi-part computation, to make sure that inversion attacks and inference attacks are not possible and federated learning also makes sure that we never collect sensitive user data. And the second one is that we will show how we boosted the performance for different tasks including um, computer vision, natural language processing, time series data, and how personalized federated learning boosts performance. And then the last one is we show how we save billions of dollars for autonomous vehicle companies because they don't have to centrally aggregate um, sensitive computer vision data for self driving cars. So, high level, this is how federated learning works. So, basically, you have different data sets that say different servers or different edge devices. Um, so, you train each model on each data set. And then the second step is you push them to a federation server. So, the most important thing to note here is that the data is not transferred, but you're just transferring machine learning models. And then the third step is you combine them on a the federation server. And this process repeats. So, again, Retrain. Private data never leaves its original source. Um, so, for example, medical imaging data never leaves like hospitals, and uh, transaction data never perform personalized fraud detection models or like risk prediction. Banks never have to simply aggregate sensitive user information um, data. So, so this is how federated learning works. But now we will dig deep into how personalized federated learning works. So basically, as you can see here, different users have different fixing patterns, for example. So in this case, we're going to train uh, how we're going to predict the next word prediction model. Uh, so basically, what happens is we want to ensure that the end users get personalization, but at the same time, they have to capture learnings from other users because obviously like the data set for a particular individual is pretty limited. So your goal is to ensure you learn from other users while at the same time, the models are personalized for you. Uh, so this is how it happens. So each user trains a model. Uh, so here we make use of uh, an optimization of the well-known optimated hypothesis, uh, which is one of the, the biggest techniques of our company. Is like we have a federated version of that, and uh, we show here how you can personalize models while still learning uh, texting patterns from other users. So. Uh, this is actually going to be presented at the European Conference of Computer Vision, where we show that for computer vision tasks, we were able to beat state of the art machine learning models by more than 10%. So, the current best is not VFL, which, um, which had a 4.1% improvement, and we were able to show for the same task, we got an improvement of 14.2 for different computer vision tasks, which you can do like medical image segmentation and for like LMP tasks and time series tasks. Um, so now let's go to the use cases, right? So some of the use cases here are basically um, in the field of quantitative finance. So basically you can see different currency exchanges are like present. So how do we kind of like come up with models to ensure that like we improve the short ratio? So exactly the same thing happens. So you start um, each um, currency trends its own model and then they send it to the personalization server hosted by DynamoFL and uh, this process repeats. Uh, if we perform our personalization algorithms, and uh, we've shown that, that we're able to like reduce the forecasting error by more than like twenty five percent. 
And in addition, we were also able to show that we were able to boost the sharp ratio, which would enable a lot of quantitative finance firms and trading companies to improve their uh, performance and perform better on tasks like portfolio returns, etc. Um, the next big use case which we're going to consider here is how can autonomous vehicles or like self driving cars um, save millions of dollars by performing fair rate return, right? So, under normal scenarios, what happens is uh, Cars would have to, so the cars would have to transfer gigabytes or petabytes of data to, let's say, S3 cloud storage, um, Azure or Google Cloud, like whatever. So, using private data learning, we were able to show that instead of spending like millions of dollars on data transfer, literally, uh, autonomous vehicles can improve their computer vision tasks for object detection, image recognition, pattern recognition, etc., um, by performing private data learning. And uh, this was a use case which we performed with a big Fortune 500 company in the, in the autonomous vehicle space, where we showed that we can literally save them um, millions of dollars uh, when they like, adopt our solution. So, retraining our contributions. So, basically, at NMFL, we ensure that like, companies get like, the state of the art personalization models while preserving privacy and reducing large amounts of data transfer costs. So, our value proposition is basically improving model performance through personalization privacy by not aggregating sensitive user data and improving performance and reducing data transfer costs. Uh, so our platform Dynamofill, we provide an end-to-end -end federated learning architecture. So everything from like local model training to like aggregation to visualizations to optimization is provided as a one-stop solution. Uh, we provide like mobile SDKs, Python SDKs and uh, top price solutions which could be hosted within your organizations. Uh, yeah, so please reach out if your, your organization has um, use cases that we're happy to chat. Happy to make any questions. Yeah, so basically what we're saying is that um, in cases where you cannot separately aggregate the um, um, so user transactions data, right, because of like a lot of like privacy laws. So say if you're a bank and uh, if you work across um, different continents, um, say the European Union has like a big privacy law called GDPR. So GDPR basically prevents you from like uh, sending and transferring data, um, sensitive data, out of like different European states or countries. So in this case, how can companies like train um, fraud detection model across different, say, different continents? So for that, we make it sort of perfect learning because technically each uh, department in each uh, country can create their own models and then they can um, use our platform uh, so that they never have to transfer data. All they're doing is like transferring um, models, which is technically allowed under GDPR um, because we have a privacy preserving way of training models. And uh, next work, you can train like um, complex models in front of action with either relation to that way. Yeah. So, do you have a requirement to have the same feature set or the same inputs and outputs for the same model type? What are the, what are the yeah, so the, the, the classic, like most commonly used case is called horizontal federated learning, which basically assumes that everyone has the same set of features. Um, but we also provide solutions where we have like different sets of features across different individuals. So even in that case, our solution will work. Yeah. Oh, there are then obviously the exact same amount of data. Oh yeah, because um, so basically the problem here is that like when you have different data distributions, right? So each client might have a different data distribution. So in this case, how do we train optimal models is the harder problem. So the, the classic thing is that if you just like uh, so these are like current state of the art like metrics, and what we are saying is that like we are able to like improve on top of them. So whatever is like available right now, whatever is the state of the art performance, we are saying we are improving them on even the extreme cases like when you have like not any data sets, etc. Yeah. How is this different from what sample techniques that exist already? Yeah, so basically federated learning, the, the underlying goal is that you are combining like different models and you're like starting with like one model and then you're you are not giving out only one model to users. So that's the most important thing to consider here, right? That like you are learning in a global model and then you are kind of like fine-tuning that model. So that is kind of like different from like classic ensemble techniques. 